Have you ever wanted to put yourself into a Red Dead Redemption style poster? No? Okay, well, I'm gonna show you how to do it anyway. Now, a lot of people confuse me for a cowboy, given my rugged good looks and fear of horses. I even have a cowboy nickname, BB Brad. Yeah. Pretty sweet. Now I'm gonna be putting this poster together in Photoshop, but the concepts are pretty basic here and you could use almost any art program to do this. So as I do with many of my tutorials over here on YouTube, I'm going to be running through things pretty quickly. Overall, this drawing took me well over an hour to create. However, I'm gonna be going through it in just a couple minutes. If you're just learning some new software, I do have some tutorials that are longer form, that are more project-based, where I spend more time and do a deeper dive into the tools and how they work. I don't have one for Photoshop, but I've got Illustrator, Procreate and Affinity Designer on the iPad, even Affinity Designer on the desktop. There's some discount codes in the description down below. First, let's take a look at this image. What makes it so distinctively red dead? Well, there are several things going on. First, it's blasted with this red color. Even the character is mostly that red color. It's also very textured and weathered. There's textures everywhere. The edges of things are rough and weathered. Even the ink lines are kind of rough. So those are the main elements we're gonna be looking at. We've got the character, the stuff behind the character, even these horses over here on the left. And then of course there's the text, which also plays a really big role. First thing I wanna do is I wanna pull the colors out of this. I wanna make a basic color palette to work from. I'm gonna just use the eyedropper tool to do that. And I'll plop those colors onto their own layer so that I can toggle them on and off as I need them. I'm gonna need a character. This realistic style isn't necessarily my strength. A lot of my work is more cartoony. So I'm gonna use a photo reference for my cowboy. I live in Ohio, so cowboys are a little hard to find. So I get to be the photo Photo reference from my cowboy today. First, I need a cowboy hat. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, I don't have a cowboy hat. I'm just gonna wing it, take my own picture, and draw the hat on me. Now, when I take the reference shot, I'm lighting up one side of my face with a light. You can't see it off camera, but I wanna get some good shadows going on. Get that photo off my phone, bring it into Photoshop, and now I'm gonna make it a black and white photo, and I'm gonna really crank up the contrast. To do that, I desaturate it first. That sucks out all the colors. And then I'm going to adjust the curves. The more vertical that curve line becomes, the more blacks and whites you're gonna have and the less grays you're gonna have in between it. That's what I'm going for, super, super high contrast. If I want more blacks, I move that vertical line over more. If I want more whites, I move it the other way. All right, so that looks good. Now onto my sketch, I'm going to ink over this. I know that sound, it's the question parrot. Did you just, did you? What did you do? You done messed up, BB Brad. On to the question. Wait, what if I don't have a drawing tablet? This exercise is definitely gonna be easier if you have one. However, you don't necessarily need to overdraw. We can use this photo and just use the cropping tool to crop out and delete the parts we don't need. And then we can set the blending layer to multiply so all the whites will disappear. And I can use the selection tool again to fill that with color. But anyway, on to the inking. Since we are in Photoshop, we're gonna take advantage of some of the really great brushes out there. I am using Kyle's brushes. I will put a link down below. If you have Adobe CC, you can get these brushes for free. Kyle has some great ink brushes. Right now, I'm going for the Mega Pack. This is where all the good stuff is. Once you get those installed, go to Inkbox in your brushes. I am using, first off, the Badass Brush. I like it because it's a clean ink brush, but at the same time, it actually looks like a brush. In fact, the lighter you press on this brush, the more you can actually see the brush strokes. Same thing when you're tapering out a line, there's a little bit of fraying going on. It gives it a rougher look than just a clean ink line. I've turned down the transparency on the image, so this way I can see my black lines really, really clearly, but I can see enough of the photo to keep drawing. And I'm just using hatch lines here to, to fill it in. I want black blotches and I want hatch lines. And I'm outlining various parts of my face as I go to get that comic book feel. On places like the hat, I enlarge the brush and make bigger swipes. I also like to vary my stroke width quite a bit. If I did all the strokes the same width, it would feel too mechanical. It wouldn't feel hand-drawn, but by having a big thick stroke and then having some smaller strokes around it, it, it adds some variety. It makes it look more natural like you're using a real brush. Now, once I have all of my ink lines into place, I'm gonna flood this thing with color. On its own layer, underneath my ink layer, I'm just going to fill it with red. And then I create a new layer and I add some of my other colors. This is where my color palette comes in handy. Since the light is coming from the right side, that's where I'm adding my highlights. 
Okay, to draw a sun, I'm going to use the shape tool, specifically the circle tool. Now, if I hold down the shift key while I'm drawing a circle, I'm not gonna get an oval. It's gonna be a perfect circle. That's what I'm going for. Now, I'm gonna fiddle with this a little bit and move it around here and there, but for the most part, I've got it in place. Let's jump back to that poster for a second. There are some trees in the background. They're silhouetted in front of the sun. This is where we get to go all Bob Ross on this thing. Let's get us some happy little trees. I'm gonna be using a different brush for this. This is one in the ink box called Broken Bumpy. It's pretty rough, like BB Brad. So when I draw these trees, I make a line and I brush down and outward in a curved motion. It's kind of like a flick of the wrist sort of motion. I start out my line by pressing hard at the top of the tree. And then as I flick out, I let up on the pressure. As I ease up on the pressure, it lets out less ink, giving it some interesting and varied texture as you come up out of that stroke and making the edge of the tree look rougher. I also tap in there lightly to add random tree dirt marks, otherwise known as leaves. I'm also going to go in there with a shade of orange that is slightly darker than the sun. I mean, very, very slightly, just to add some more trees behind the red ones. It's so subtle. I don't want to draw a lot of attention to those trees. I just want them to be there for texture. Enough with the trees now. We need to rough up this circle. To do this, I'm going to use yet another brush. This time, I'm using something called the Brayer Boss. Now, there are several here with that name. I'm using the version of it that does not have a number by it because it is the roughest texture. This brush is like putting ink on a roller and rolling it out over a piece of paper. I'm gonna go around the edge of this circle and I'm gonna go around several times varying the pressure with my brush. My goal is for you not to see the clean edge of the circle anymore, but rough it up to the point where you don't know where that solid circle begins and where the edge ends. And then I could just fill out the bottom of the circle with red because I don't need that anymore, maybe resize it a little bit and it's looking good. The next thing we need from our poster is we need some nice horses to be galloping in the background to give it that Western theme. Now, I may have mentioned earlier, I'm not a fan of uh, actual horses. Hey, buddy. But lucky for me, I have the next best thing. Meet Linus. He's a good boy. He let me take some nice glamour shots of him to use for this project. So I'm just gonna take one of these photos and I'm gonna be a little sloppy about it, but I'm just gonna take my selection tool and I'm gonna draw an outline around him. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be messing with his edges a little bit anyway. And then I can copy him out of the photo, go back to my image and paste him in there. Now, having a bunny sitting on top of my face isn't the best look, so let's change him up a little bit. I'm gonna do to him what I did with my original photo. I'm gonna go to adjustments, I'm gonna go to desaturate, and then I'm gonna go to curves, and I'm gonna do the same contrast thing with him that I did with my photo. Since he is on his own layer, I can go to that layer. I can set it to multiply, which is gonna drop out all the white colors and only leave the black. And then I could just resize him and put him where I need to. Now I got some other photos too to add some variety, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna replicate it, copy, paste, replicate it, copy, paste. Do it over and over again until I have a fleet of bunnies. Oh yeah, this is looking rough and tough. The last thing that we need to take a look at here is our text. So I'm just gonna use the text tool and type out dead or alive. You could put whatever you want here. You could make up your own game title if you wanted to. Now the font that I'm using here is Impact, which is really one of the more boring fonts you're gonna find out there, but it's gonna work for what we wanna do here because what I wanna do is I wanna draw over that font. So I'm gonna change the opacity of it then I'm gonna grab some white paint and I'm gonna use the same brush that we used around the sun. The one called Brayer Boss that feels like you're using a paint roller. And then on its own layer, I'm just gonna take that white paint and I'm gonna paint over the entire block of text. And I'm gonna do Dead or Alive as well. And as you can see, this has way more personality and it's way more interesting to look at than just a boring font. The, the, the font is just there to provide us an outline in which to draw. So once that's in place, then on its own layer, I'm going to go behind it and using that same brush, I'm just gonna put some black paint behind the whole thing. I go in here and there and mess it up so it doesn't look too uniform. I want this to look rough. And then just for good measure, I take the dead or alive. I paint it red and it's looking pretty good. Now the thing that we're missing is this poster has a lot of texture to it. It's not just a solid color red. And so what I wanna do is I wanna rough up 
all of these flat colors that I've painted here. So to do that, I'm going to create its own layer. I'm still using that Brayer Boss brush, which I like so much, and I'm just gonna make it really huge. And I'm just gonna basically roll this whole canvas with black. And I'm pressing very lightly because I don't want the whole thing to be black. What I'm trying to get is that texture that it gives me. So I want less pen pressure when I'm drawing. So I'm drawing very lightly here. And on that layer where I painted everything black, then I'm going to adjust the blending modes. Here I'm gonna set it to overlay. Now the very first thing you see is there is a lot of texture here. It's actually looking pretty cool. I think there's too much texture for what I'm going there. I don't want the texture to be the main focus. I want the texture to kind of fall into the background and just be part of the artwork. So what I'm gonna do with this layer is now that the texture is looking good is I'm just gonna dial it back to like 25 or 30%. That way there's a texture on everything, but it's not overwhelming. And there we go, there is our wanted post if you guys gave this a shot, I'd love to see what you came up with. Feel free to tag me over on Twitter or Instagram with your results. I'd love to take a look. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in a couple of days.